What's a market sizing question and how can you answer it? You'll find out in this video. Let me ask you, how many golf balls can you fit into a Boeing 747? What's your answer? Don't worry, you don't need to answer immediately. That would be crazy. So this question is one of those infamous questions that consulting firms such as McKinsey ask during their interview. It's called a market sizing question. Market sizing questions, which are also called dinner conversation cases, focus on estimating the size of a market in terms of annual revenue or the number of units sold, rather than determining how to compete successfully in the market. Fact, they're often asked early in the consulting interview process or in interviews of undergraduate students who may not have a deep business background. Or they can also be one component of complicated multi-step cases in later round interviews. They focus on making logical estimates, showing creativity, and doing basic math. Now, why do firms ask this type of question? There are three reasons why. They want to test if you can create a logical approach, make basic calculations, and clearly communicate the answer and why it matters to the client. How do you answer market sizing questions? There are two approaches you can use. Top down. You start from the total population and divide your way down to the relevant market. Here's a sample market sizing question. How many laptop computers are sold in North America annually? If you use the top-down approach, start with the population of North America and work your way down to the target market of the people who need and can afford laptop computers and how often they would buy them given the average useful life of the equipment. Bottom up, you start with a single base unit, a typical customer or a sale or business outlet, and multiply your way up to the entire relevant market. Here's a sample market size in question. What is the market size for IT support services for retail customers in the U.S.? If you use the bottom up approach, estimate the need for a single user getting support one time, then roll that up to the total support needs of all retail computer users over the 12 month period to calculate the market size. Most questions can be solved with either approach, but one is usually easier than the other. For large markets with multiple customer segments, the top-down approach to market sizing usually works best. For local markets with a homogeneous customer base, the bottom-up approach generally works best. Whatever approach you choose, you have to do the seven-step process to solve your market sizing question. Ask clarifying questions. Is the interviewer looking for revenues, units sold, for what time period, and what geographic region? Create a structured process for finding the answer. Don't just leap into the math. No, God, please, no! As with any case, take a moment to plan your approach to the market sizing question. Start with the math only after you're confident about your approach and have walked your interviewer through it step by step. Estimate using round numbers. 10%, 25%, and 50% are easier to calculate than 12.7%. Ground your estimations with facts. Don't just pick a number or a percentage out of thin air. You can't do market research in the middle of an interview, but you can base your answers on experience or facts that you know. Get the math right. It's hard to calculate math problems correctly under the pressure of an interview. Practice will help. Sanity check your answer. Once you get to your final answer, check whether your numbers make sense. If not, go back and check your assumptions and math calculations. Explain the so what. Remember, part of this exercise is about communication. Explain the significance of the market size you've arrived at. Is this a big opportunity for your client or not worthwhile? The New York City Medical Department has reached out to you to solve the problem of unhealthy working hours for the primary care providers, known as PCPs, in the city's largest hospital. They want to know how they could cater to their patients and maintain a healthy work life for the PCPs. What market sizing approach should you use, top down or bottom down? Though this case prompt doesn't say how many or what size, it's a market sizing question. The reason PCPs are overworked is because there are too few of them relative to the number of patients. Confirm this with your interviewer, then dig in. As you heard earlier, there are two ways to approach a market sizing question, top down or bottom up. In this case, a bottom up approach would work better as the number of PCPs catering to the patients are limited, creating a supply constraint on patient care. Let's now create a structure and set up the equation. We need to determine the number of additional PCPs we should hire to reduce the working hours and improve work-life balance. To calculate the number of additional PCPs required, you can say that you need to know the following. How many PCPs are on staff at the hospital today? How many hours do they work? What is the ideal number of work hours? Let's assume you got these data points from your interviewer. 250 PCPs work in the hospital. They work 16 hours a day. They'd ideally like to work 10 hours a day, which would still be a lot, but not so out of control. Next, say that I wanna find out how many patients there are per day. 
With that, I can calculate how many PCPs the hospital would need to treat all of its patients with PCPs working 10 hours a day. Number of PCPs required to get to ideal working hours equals number of patients in a day divided by number of patients treated per day multiplied by ideal working hours. To calculate the number of patients treated per day, I need to do additional calculations. Number of patients treated per hour equals number of patients in a day divided by number of PCPs times current working hours. You found out that the hospital treats 8,000 patients per day. Now let's do the calculation. With the data from the interviewer, we can calculate the number of PCPs required to get to the ideal working hours. Number of patients treated per hour equals number of patients in a day divided by number of PCPs times current working hours equals 8,000 patients per day divided by 250 PCPs times 16 hours per day equals two patients per hour per PCP. The number of PCPs required to get to the ideal working hours equals the number of patients in a day divided by number of patients treated per hour times ideal working hours equals 8,000 patients per day divided by two patients per PCP per hour times 10 hours per day equals 400 PCPs. Number of additional PCPs required equals 400 PCPs minus 250 PCPs equals 150 PCPs. Let's do a sanity check. This is a 67% increase in the number of PCPs. Does that make sense? Yes, because we're trying to cut their hours from 16 hours a day to 10 hours a day, which is a big cut. What insight did you get from this? You can say to improve the work-life balance of PCPs, the management will need to hire 150 more PCPs. A great caser would add that by reducing the PCPs working hours and improving their quality of life would make it easier to hire doctors at the hospital. Okay, how was that sample question? Were you able to solve it too? Did everything make sense? You may be thinking, Bruce, how can I get better at this? Well, the best way to get great at market sizing is to practice. Turn dinner conversations into opportunities to practice. You can turn just about any item around you or any business you walk by into a market sizing question. Give it a try. Here are some practice market sizing questions. How many cups of coffee does your local coffee shop serve every day? How many people sat in the same chair in the cafeteria as you are sitting in now over the past year? How many lawnmowers are sold in the US every year? What is the market size for frozen hamburger patties during the summer months? How many hot dogs are sold at Red Sox games? Now that you know what a market sizing question is and how you can get better at solving it, I'm curious, will you be going through a case interview soon? If you comment below the name of the firm that you will be interviewing for, I'll share resources on how you can land and pass your interviews. So for example, if you put BCG, I'll send you some resources for passing your interview with BCG. And if you're 100% serious about becoming a consultant at BCG or another amazing firm, I would love to help. My team and I are former consulting recruiters and interviewers who help applicants get and pass the interviews so they land their consulting offer. To date, we have a 90% success rate. That means nine out of 10 applicants who work with us land at least one offer and we've helped over 800 people already land a consulting job. If you are serious about becoming a management consultant and want to hear how we can help you, click on the link below to book a call with my team to find out more. Booking this call could put you one step closer to landing your offer at McKinsey, Bain, BCG, or other management consulting firms. But you don't have to take my word for it. Hear it from James. James secured nine interviews from leading consulting firms despite being rejected during his first tries. He then accepted his offer from Bain. I'll link to his videos somewhere around me. Okay, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.